Well, hello everybody and welcome to our Seder College online class. Today is Thursday, the 9th of April, 2020. And I just want to remind everybody that we will not be having class tomorrow. Tomorrow is Good Friday here in Ireland, um, part of the Catholic calendar. And that means it's a day off for a lot of people. So we are going to take a little break tomorrow and also Monday. Monday is Easter Monday here in Ireland. So that is also what we call a bank holiday, a day that people get off from work. And um, we're going to take those two days to give ourselves a little bit of a break this weekend. However, we are not gone forever. We are back here at the same times as usual on Tuesday, the 14th of April. So please make sure you mark that on your calendar so you can get back here with us. Maybe give yourself a little alarm reminder because it's hard to keep track of time sometimes. All right, so welcome everybody to class. I'm your teacher, Lydia. Today we're continuing with what we were studying yesterday. Yesterday we were talking about the verbs of deduction. Um, we need to finish deduction and we're going to move on to speculation. Speculation. Um, so thank you so much for being here and joining us. I also want to remind you about all the cool stuff we have on SedaCollegeOnline.com. Tons of games and other courses and great things for you to check out um, when you subscribe. But we also have our free um, podcast on Spotify. And I'm going to be doing an episode about coronavirus really soon, so I hope you can check that out as well. I think we've given enough time for people to arrive and get here. Um, again, as usual, make sure you have your notebook, you have a highlighter or pen or something um, to make notes and get things to jump out at you. And always, always, always make note of any questions um, as we go through the lesson. You can ask me in the comments if you're watching live, okay? Great. So let's get started um, and move on. All right. So just a little review because it's always good to review our definitions. We use deduction to say what we believe strongly is true or happening due to good evidence. Good evidence. So we have a real strong feeling about this. Um, the verbs that we use for deduction are must, can, can't, should, could, ought to, may, or might. Okay. And we went through must, can, and can't yesterday. Okay. So we're going to go through most of the rest today. All right. And we use speculation to say what we think or believe without strong evidence. We use bound, sure, likely, unlikely, definitely, and prob probably, excuse me, with speculation. Okay, so let's get started. All right, first we're going to start with could, might, may, the rest of deduction that we hadn't finished yesterday. When we use could, might, and may, the first way we can use it is could, might, or may plus the infinitive, okay? The infinitive of the next verb. So if I read number one here in detail, we can use could, might, may plus infinitive to say that something is, po or sorry, to say that it's possible something is true, but we are not sure, okay? I can't get him on the phone, he could be away. I can't get him on the phone, he might be away. I can't get him on the phone, he may be away. All right? We didn't take action when we could, and now it could be too late. We didn't take action when we could, and now it might be too late. We didn't take action when we could, and now it may be too late. Okay, so those are some examples for you guys. Could, might, or may plus infinitive. Could, might, or may plus infinitive. I'm repeating it again so you can get the formula in your head. Could, might, or may plus infinitive. Okay? Could, might, or may plus infinitive. All right, great. So guys, guess what? As usual, it's your turn. Break it on down to grandma town. 
you are going to go to Grammar Town and write your own original sentence using could, might, or may, plus, what's that? You got it. Infinitive. All right. You can do this one minute, 30 seconds. You know what to do. If you're brand new, welcome. This is what you do, okay? We're going to throw you right into the deep end of the swimming pool, and you are going to swim, my friends. You are going to swim like a fish. All right, where is my timer? Timer, one minute, 30 seconds. Start now. Get you some music. Music makes the people come together. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful, cultured, fabulous. Mm -mm -mm. You can do it. And do this. Okay, that's that, my friends. So we're going to pause that beautiful music. I'm going to check on your sentences if I haven't already. And we're going to see example two. Could, might, or may plus infinitive was the last example. But now we have, and I didn't have a lot of space to write all the words, so I put CMM. Could, might, or may be plus Gerund. That's your ing verb. Okay. Could, might, or may be plus gerund. Could, might, or may be plus gerund. You can do it. Okay. You guys got this. We use could, might, or may be plus gerund to say that we are pretty sure. Again, almost 100% sure it's possible that something is happening now. We are now sure about the possibility. This is all possibility, but we're not 100% sure. We just feel very strongly about it, okay? So let's look at our examples. That's right. Look closely. Tom isn't at the office. He might be working from home today. Maybe. Tom is not at the office. He may be working from home today. Oh, Tom isn't at the office. He could be working from home today. All right. I don't know why could isn't here. That's a little oversight on my part, but we could also have could in either one of these examples. Why isn't she picking up her phone? She might be driving. She may be driving. She could be driving. Okay. Three different answers here. Why isn't she picking up her phone? She could be driving. Come on, give her a break. Not everybody can pick up the phone all the time. Am I right? Yeah, you know what I mean. All right, let's move on to your turn. Write a sentence, guys. You have this here. I'm gonna leave it for another second and I'm gonna go over it with you again. Now, could, might, or may be plus gerund. Now, since I didn't use could in the examples, why don't you use could in your example? Okay, 
I challenge you to do it now. I can't win this. You try. You got this. I know you can do it. Please write a sentence like the last examples, okay? But this time I'm saying use could. Could be plus gerund, right? That's what we said. Could be plus gerund. You got this, guys. One minute, 30 seconds on the clock. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's on the clock, my friends. Can do it. Something more upbeat. Oh, that's lovely. You got this. You can do it. You got this, you can do it. I believe in you. I also believe, coming to the end of our time. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, peeps, people. It's another way to say people, peeps. All right, peeps, let's see what you got. All right, and I may have already checked out what you got. So if I did, in that case, moving on. Could, might, may, three. That's right. You might be thinking, really, teacher, really? How come every grammar point in English has so many different ways to be explained? Listen, I'm going to tell you what I told my students in the classroom. I didn't invent the language. I just teach it. So I'm doing my best, best for you, my friends, okay? Love ya. Just watch me try to blink like a strange person. All right, so we have two options here. Hence the longer explanation, all right? So, could, might, or may have plus past participle. Again, a perfect tense here. Could, might, or may have plus past participle. Or, could, might, or may have been plus gerund. That's right. Another gerund. Okay? And you might say to me, why do we need this, though? And I might say to you, we have the word have in here again and have been. Why do you think? The last example was talking about the now. When is this example talking about? When? You got it. The past. Going back to the past. All right. Three. We can use could, might, may, have plus past participle or might, may, have, been, plus gerund, to say that it's possible that something was true or happened in the past, okay? In the past. Do the hustle. Do, 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 do the hustle. That's a dance from the past, just so you know. All right. It's been five days. They could have finished painting the house by now. It's been five days. They might have finished painting the house by now. It's been five days. They may have finished painting the house by now. Or, here's another one. It's been five days. They should have finished painting the house by now. With should, you expect that it would have been done before. And you're not happy. Okay? But they all say they thought something would happen before now in the past. 
All right. She was home the other night, but didn't answer the door. She might have been talking on the phone. She could have been talking on the phone. She may have been talking on the phone. And again, I forgot could. Silly me. Silly teacher. Okay. She could have been talking on the phone. She wasn't home. She was home the other night, but she didn't answer the door. She could have been talking on the phone. Hello? Okay. So don't always assume. Let's not make assumptions. Remember, to assume makes an ASS out of you and me. So don't assume. It's not good to make an assumption if you don't really know. All right. Moving on. Swimming on to the next slide. Let's do this. It's your turn. You write a sentence, guys. You are doing it. It's all about you. Okay. This beautiful music by Vernon Handley, played by the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Your turn. All right, that's it, guys. Three, two, one. All right, I'm going to check out your sentences. And while I do, let's move on. Okay, could mind May 4. That's right, <laughs> the fourth one. And you might be saying to me, I feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. Am I in the movie Groundhog Day? Oh, my God. Nothing really matters anymore. But guess what, guys? You're not doing the same thing over and over again. Really, here, we're actually looking at the fourth way to use could, might, or may. All right? And this is real. Don't worry. This is the end of it. I promise. Okay? We can use could have plus the past participle. Okay? To say that something was possible in the past but did not happen. Okay? So that's the big difference here. The last example, we're just saying that something was true or happened in the past. It did happen, okay? The next one, we're saying that it was possible in the past, but it did not happen, okay? It could have happened, but it didn't, okay? So that's me using could have plus past participle. Okay, and the past participle of the verb is not always the same as the simple past. So remember, if it's regular verb, it is the same as the simple past. It's an ED ending. If it's an irregular verb, it's not the same as the simple past. So check, check, check. Okay. He could have played professionally, but he had a terrible injury in high school. So did he play professionally? No, he did not. You're correct. But he had the possibility, he had the ability, he could have, if it wasn't for that stupid injury, okay? He could have got better jobs if he had spoken English more fluently. 
So did he get better jobs? No, he did not because he did not speak English more fluently. Okay, so he had the ability, he had a mouth, he had eyes, but he didn't speak it more fluently so he couldn't get the better jobs. Got it? You know what's coming next. We're breaking down to grammar town. Bring it on down to grammar town. That's right, that was better. Um, melodically, this is really similar to something that Justin Timberlake did in SNL. So if you look at old ep episodes of Saturday Night Live on YouTube, you can hear Justin Timberlake sing a song that's very similar to advertise things. So we're just going to bring it on down to grammar town. All right. Now we're looking at, oh, sorry. I didn't give you a chance to do this. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take a break. We're not going to do this one. We're going to move on to the speculation. Okay. Hold tight. Okay. Sit and relax. Speculation one. Be bound or be sure plus two. So be bound or sure plus two. Okay? And remember, speculation is about saying something you think will happen. You don't have much evidence, okay? You don't have evidence in the same way that you have with deduction. So bound and sure are adjectives that are used to say that we're pretty sure that something will be true or happen in the future. We, it's kind of more that we have a strong feeling about it, okay? The Jamaican is bound to win the final, or the Jamaican is sure to win the final. There are bound to be some discrepancies during the meeting, so be prepared. You don't know what discrepancies are? These are things that don't make sense, don't add up, maybe like minor mistakes or whatever, okay? There are sure to be some discrepancies during the meeting, so be prepared, okay? So we're saying we have a strong feeling that this might happen, all right? Okay, now it's your turn. You can either choose could, might, may, have, plus past participle, or be bound or sure, plus two, okay? Your turn. Bring it on down to grammar town. One minute, 30 seconds. I'm going to show you this again. He could have seen her if he had looked up from his phone, but he didn't. So there's an example for you. Coronavirus is bound to leave a lasting impression on the world. People are sure to be excited when the lockdown is over. Okay. Your mother is sure to love that jumper. She could have helped me, but she didn't. You're doing great, guys. I want to give you your daily reminder that you are doing something awesome being here with us, studying at State of College Online, live in these classes, and you need to give yourself a pat on the back and feel proud because you're doing great. I'm super proud of you, and you need to be too because no matter what is going on in this crazy world, we need to be our own best friends and be proud of ourselves and get ourselves through things because the only person we can really depend on is ourselves and we need to look after ourselves first, then we can help and look after other people, okay? So look after yourself, keep doing great things. You're here studying with us, it's amazing. I'm super proud of you, well done. Can't wait to see the sentences that you came up with. All right, speculation two. Likely or unlikely that plus clause, so plus the rest of the sentence, or subject plus 
B, likely or unlikely, plus, to, plus, infinitive, okay? We have two options here. And remember, likely is something that we think is very possible. Unlikely, we don't think it's very possible, okay? So likely and unlikely are adjectives. And what is an adjective? That's right, you got it. It's a word that describes a noun. If something is likely to happen, it means that it will probably happen or that it is expected to happen. If something is unlikely to happen, it means that it probably won't, okay? It's likely that upskilling will help you get a better job. Upskilling. If you don't know what that means, up, it's like getting better or higher level skills, okay? So retraining or re-educating yourself to have higher level skills, better um, qualifications, okay? It's likely that upskilling will help you get a better job. He is unlikely to notice if you change your hairstyle. All of us ladies in relationships with men know that usually, while he'll say, you look beautiful, and he's wonderful, and he means well, he doesn't notice the details. So he's unlikely to, he might, maybe, there's still a little smidgen of hope there, but he is unlikely to notice if you change your hairstyle. <sighs> Sorry. That's the truth. Hashtag truth telling, okay? So I gave you an example with each one there, and you know what to do. You gotta try this. It's super, super important. Use it or lose it, okay? Use it or lose it. So you could say, it's likely that I will order pizza on Friday night, because I usually like to do that. Or they are unlikely to help you if you're rude to them in the shop. Okay, the people who work in the shop are very unlikely to help you if they you are rude to them. Okay, you're likely to get more help and better service with great manners. That's it, right? So your turn, guys. You got this. It's your turn to write an original sentence as usual. I'm giving you one minute, 30 seconds on the clock. Put the music on. Start your engines. Get going, guys. You can do this. Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, that is it, my friends. Let's check it out. Let's see what you got, what you bring into the table. Awesome. All right, speculation three. Definitely and probably, okay, either one of those would go before the main verb, the primary and most important verb, and after the auxiliary or helping verb. Auxiliary verbs are verbs like will and have, okay? They're um, there to help or facilitate the grammar in this situation. They don't actually do anything in terms of giving you meaning, all right? Um, the main verb gives most of the meaning of what the action is. The auxiliary verb will help it go to a different tense, like the past tense or the future tense. So you say, he will be here tomorrow. Will is the auxiliary verb, but be is really important, okay? Three, 
definitely and probably are used to say you're pretty sure something will or is happening. So definitely and probably are used to say you're pretty sure that something will or is happening. You'll definitely, so that's you will, but put together, you'll definitely get the job. Your CV is fantastic. Don't worry about it. You'll definitely get the job. Your CV is fantastic. Okay. He is definitely our best player. No one scores as often as he does. He is definitely our best player. I mean, nobody scores as often as he does. And they go before auxiliary verb in negative sentences, okay? They definitely won't find any evidence, okay? So definitely is before won't, okay? Won't, like will, being the auxiliary there. They definitely won't find any evidence the criminal is a pro. Like, he's a professional. He knows what he's doing. Okay? No evidence left. All right, so that's really important because I hear people and see people write sometimes they won't definitely find or they won't definitely see or they will, they, they will definitely. They definitely will. They definitely won't. They definitely will. They definitely won't. They definitely are. They definitely aren't. Okay? She definitely is. He definitely isn't. Okay? That's how it's going to go. She definitely isn't seeing anyone right now. And she doesn't want to. So what does that mean? She can't physically see someone? No. This is about relationships. She's not dating someone. She's not um, see, getting together with somebody, male or female or whatever, on a regular basis in a relationship. And she's not interested. Okay? She definitely isn't seeing anyone right now, and she doesn't want to. Okay? So don't go there. Closed. All right? Awesome. Guys, you're doing great. So remember, definitely and probably go before the main verb and after the auxiliary helping verb. Okay? After the auxiliary, before the main verb. Got it? Good. Before the auxiliary verb, only in the negative. Okay? She will definitely help. She definitely won't help. Okay? Like I was saying before, you know, you have to pay attention if it's negative or positive. That's super, super important. Check the examples here. We can give another one to, um, she definitely isn't seeing anybody. She isn't definitely seeing. I mean, that just doesn't work, okay? So the negatives, it has to be before. Sometimes you could do it before with a positive, but, you know, you will definitely, he is definitely, he will definitely. That works. But with the negatives, you got to make sure that it's subject- Definitely or probably will or won't or auxiliary verb. In this case, she definitely isn't seeing anyone. The auxiliary verb is actually the verb be here um, to facilitate this sentence. Be plus the gerund, meaning a present continuous, right? So she's not seeing anybody right now. Guys, we've gone through so much grammar today. We totally brought it on down to grammar town, hashtag grammar town all over today, just like exploding. Okay, so you have done awesome. I have to tell you again, thank you so much. Great job. We're going to practice one more, this that we just went over, speculation three. Okay, definitely and probably. Hit me with a sentence. I will check it out for you. I'm going to give you a minute this time. One minute. Okay, go. Teacher will definitely be seeing a movie tonight on Netflix. Teacher definitely isn't sorry to be here with you. 
I'm very happy to be here with you guys. I'm so glad you're here studying with me. I love your questions. Keep your questions coming in the live, guys. And if you can't be with here, me here at the live, you know, make sure that you jo jo jot, <laughs> jot down, J-O-T, this is like write down, jot down your questions and you can find a way to send it to us on sayatocollegeonline.com or Google your question. Like, what does this word mean? How do you use this grammar point in English? Google is your friend. You know, ask questions in Google and you're going to get great information back, okay? So you can think about me as somebody introducing you to new information and you can study more on your own, okay? You've done awesome. I'm going to check out your sentences and I just want to say a little real life situation, give you a little real life situation how you use this grammar, okay? So our friend here, this handsome guy is saying, 2020 might be the worst year in our lifetime. Wah, wah. He's being kind of negative. And the girl is saying, well, it definitely won't be like 2019. <laughs> that's for sure. So yeah, that's for sure. 2020 is nothing like 2019 was, but you know what? Life goes on. Life will move on. We're all here for each other. We're all doing the best that we can. We're all in this together. So great job, everybody. Wonderful work in this lesson today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. I want to remind you again that we're taking two days off. We will see you on Tuesday, the 14th of April. I'll be so happy to see you again then. Take a rest. Enjoy. Watch some movies in English with no subtitles for good practice. Um, watch it again if you didn't hear what it said the first time, okay? That's okay. Repeat, repeat, repeat. That's how you're going to become great. Practice makes perfect. I have loved being here with you at State of College Online live for this advanced class. Thank you so much. I'm Teacher Lydia. Peace out.